10 minutes. Two more conferences. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. And, and we are welcoming, we are welcoming Judy Thompson. Uh, Judy uh, is with us for the first time. Um, she is an international recognized TEDx speaker. Uh, she is founder of Thompson Language Center, author, educator, uh, uh, with the BA in English, TESOL certification, language assessor certification. Judy develops and de delivers groundbreaking courses for students and teachers. Uh, English is Crazy was the first of her eight publications, and her system for teaching speaking is incorporated in English curricula in more than 60 countries. Judy is from Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, and the subject um, she's going to present today is 21st century approaches to language learning. Judy, you're welcome. And thank you again for your early, <laughs> early wake up today because of our conference. You're welcome. Um, are you gonna do my slides or should I try and do them? Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do just a second. I'll share the screen and hope it will work this and then I'll... i'm just going to start talking so um yeah. yeah can you see can you see the presentation next. sure yeah okay. people let me know when next slide is supposed to be next okay. slide <laughs> just a second just a second yeah 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 so first of all uh the ukrainian culture is huge in canada there there's a they're part of the profile of my country um, everyone knows about Ukrainian eggs and Canada lets, lets uh, immigrants keep their culture. So um, our heart is breaking for the Ukrainian situation right now. I just wanted to get that elephant out of the room. Okay, next. Uh, so in Canada, everybody learns French in school and when we graduate, nobody speaks it. So when I started teaching adults, English at the for the Board of Education was exactly the same story. So people studied English for years and years and years, and then they never spoke it. So this wasn't fine with me because they were immigrants, they wanted jobs, they wanted to immigrate. I mean, they wanted to belong um, in Canada and they couldn't without speaking English. So I shifted my focus to how do you get people to speak English? And it was prioritizing intelligibility over being perfect. It, there was a distinction between written English. We all have to know, teachers have to know everything about written English. Students don't have to know everything about spoken English in order to make themselves understood. And as many of the speakers said, it's the practicing, it's the real life that um, has them become fluent. So yeah, there's English is crazy. That was a good one. Okay, next. So we're gonna talk about three things. We're gonna talk about pattern lear learning versus details. We're gonna talk about active and several of the speakers spoke about um, real life activities and speaking and practicing in real life. Uh, so that one's gonna be short. And facilitating versus teaching. Facilitating doesn't mean make it easier in, um, in education anymore. It's a different approach. And we're gonna look at that because it's huge. Okay, next. So here's a pattern. Patterns are rules with no exceptions. So on this page is the pronunciation of every word in English. So there's more than a million words and the pronunciation of every one is found on this page. Um, so there are 26 letters in ABC and 40 sounds in English. So the, the issue with English is spelling doesn't make sense. So people who are learning English, um, they can't speak it because spelling doesn't make sense. And native English speakers, almost 40%, don't read well enough to thrive in this century because they can speak it and the reading doesn't make sense. And this is largely unaddressed actually in school. But by happy accident, there's 16 vowel, A-E-I-O-U is a perfect example. There's five vowels, they make 16, different vowel sounds in the general American accent, which is the most widely used English accent in the world, um, but they're featured. So for example, 
Bray holds the long A vowel sound. I've never said long A to a student in my life, but it holds the A vowel sound. It's featured. So if you close your eyes and I read day, play, name, eight, great, rain, nation, disdain, you can hear that they're all, they all have the same main vowel sound and they're all gray words. Um, so anyways, that's pretty cool. Judy, Judy. So if somebody said Judy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn my head. The main vowel sound is the stress syllable and that's where all the intelligibility is in English. If they know this on the first day, they can actually just start talking English and be intelligible, be understood to strangers. Okay, Judy is blue. If we had time, we would figure out what color everybody's name is, but we don't. So next slide, please. So the picture on the box. So the we do know a ton about English and we meet it out in little pieces that learners can't are expected to assimilate on their own and they cannot. So we teach them about the verb to be and phrasal verbs and articles, but they don't know how they fit together. And they, and they actually never figure that out. So the pattern, this is the pattern for speaking English. All aspects of speaking English are on this page uh, with no exceptions. That's what pattern means. So you give them the, the picture on the box on the first day, and then they can fit the pieces in that they learn as they go. Speaking and writing is really grammar dependent, speaking isn't. And they need to know that on the first day. Speaking isn't writing said out loud. They're actually unrelated. So the six patterns that govern all English conversations. And I did little booklets for refugee hosts, people with no teaching background, teach speaking English really, really effectively with these little um, backpacker guidebooks and no jargon. It's just make it work, make it work, make it work. Somebody said, Shane, I think, said prioritize. So what's the single most important thing they know, they need to know in order to have a conversation in, in English and it's word stress. So the, there's a pronunciation booklet, which doesn't really matter. We've collapsed pron pronunciation with um, accent reduction. Everyone has an accent. Everyone has an accent. If word stress is in place, English has infinite tolerance for mistakes individual sound substitution, individual sounds missing, individual sounds mispronounced. So pronunciation and conversation are different things. And school is focused on pronunciation as if it matters and it kind of doesn't. So um, conversation is word stress, sentence stress and linking, which linking is actually a listening skill. And that's the, the, the book that makes the most difference for everyone is the little conversation book. Fluency isn't for everyone, but everyone needs conversation. Um, speaking English is really, really easy, really easy. School makes it so hard, it's actually impossible because students are wor so worried about their accent, which isn't a real issue, and their grammar, which English speakers aren't paying attention to anyways. So toddlers figure out all by themselves with no instruction because it's so simple. So it's the using it and the listening to it. And the, almost everybody spoke about real life um, and how important that is. So the goal is to get them speaking in real life as quickly as possible with the least amount of information. And that's teaching them the patterns. And there they are, it's not hard. Next slide. Please, I'm not gonna go into this. This is Rita Bakers and she's a genius. She's like the smartest ESL teacher in the world. So she solved English grammar like uh, Rubik's Cube. So there is no configuration in English grammar that doesn't can't be plotted onto this chart. Again, it's a single page. This, this is how English grammar works. In every sentence they encounter, and every sentence, any idea they want to generate, they can pull the structure off here. Negatives, modals, questions, perfect tenses, everything is on that paper. She drives a Jaguar, 
and she gave one to her husband. She's the only rich ESL teacher that I know, and she deserves it. So she can explain this sheet, how to use this sheet to you or I, in less than an hour. And it takes her a few hours to teach a student. This is the power of patterns and giving them the picture on the box. Okay, next slide. I think that's it for this stuff. Yeah, active learning, this is the only slide on it. So it's learning by doing, all the speakers that I heard mentioned that. I call it don't teach fractions make pancakes. And here's an actual, this is a, a wider pro project slide, but there are many slides of students making pancakes in class. So you do the lesson and you make the pancakes and at the end you say, by the way, you know, half a cup, that was fractions. If you do it in English, Oh, Steve, you probably need to turn your microphone off there. You can hear you snipping. So um, a lot of teachers go, I don't, I, you know, I can't do this with 20, 25 students, but it's happening by the, in, in classrooms and Lautrette, the co-constructed classroom. She has, does this and facilitated learning in any classroom. You can do it tomorrow with her book. Brent Lichtman, uh, he wrote Thrive, and it's how to transform your class, your school, and your board. Um, there's lots of schools, charter schools, Waldorf schools, and Finland and Scandinavia, there's whole countries that teach this way. You're gonna hear about Michael Stewart. I think um, maybe ask him next year to talk. He does skills first, and he has a marking scheme for soft and hard skills simultaneously is brilliant. Okay, next slide. Teaching versus facilitating, they're actually opposites. So teachers talk and facilitators listen, and it's simple to get from one to the other, it's ask more questions. Teachers see what's wrong, facilitators see what's right. So facilitators listen and validate the contribution and find something good about it. The focus is on what's working instead of onerous listing of everything they did wrong. Part of it makes the space safer, safer for sharing, and part of it is or collaborative. I'll, sh I'll show you, the next slide that I'll show you, all of this was just blah, blah, blah till I saw somebody do it. And teachers are authoritarians, um, facilitation, Facilitators are leaders. And I'll show you how this works in the next slide. Please. This was a real life example. And this was a, a guy from Boston actually was facilitating an English class. And um, he didn't know anything about English. And his kids were going, Dad, like, how are you going to facilitate an English class? He goes, I don't know anything about English, but I know everything about facilitating, and then he did. So the students received the lesson uh, prior to the Zoom call, so they fill in their answers to simple questions. This article was about biomimetics and the value of having an arboretum or nature inside of a hospital and putting nature and medicine together that way. That was the article, it's pretty sophisticated. The course was for teachers. What's the main idea of the article? And then they write down what the main idea it is. And there it is in red. This was a, a combination of many common mistakes um, the respondents made. So you, you and I as teachers, we're all over this. You know, there's no capital, there's no verb, the capital's in the wrong place. Capitalizing the words they thought were important was a very common thing. Even teachers did that. This is important, this is important. It was adorable. And I thought, okay, where is he gonna start? This is me, arms folded, going, where is he going to start with all the mistakes in this? The answer was he didn't do any. He said, thank you for your contribution. He said, that's what I understood the article to mean too. So the meaning, the, the, the participant totally got the meaning of the article. And then he found something positive to say about every participant. There were 25 in this group. Your spelling's perfect. And then he went to the next student. And he, and, he, and he made it conversational. So he, you know, he said like Harpreet, 
what's the main idea of the article in the in the Zoom session? Um, and then Harpreet read his own answer. It's no surprise, he wrote it. And then the teacher thanked him, the, the facilitator thanked him. But while the facilitator was having this little conversation, he wrote the answer underneath. So underneath the participant's contribution, he wrote the corrected version, never referred to it, never corrected anything, and just and, and then went to the next student. You know, Jasmine, what's the main idea of the article? And then she read her thing. And that and that's how it went. By the end of the three lessons, so they're looking at 25 people's responses, 25 people's mistakes, and they're watching them get corrected with no word. By the third lesson, they were all writing perfect sentences. He never mentioned grammar once. So it was it was more drawing on and practicing the English that they'd already studied. And that changed my whole life. Okay, and I'll never teach again. Next slide, please. So the 21st century solutions, artificial intelligence has disrupted traditional education, the blah, blah, blah at the front of the class. If you want information, you get it off your phone. But the humanity is missing. And I, and I could hear the humanity in the lesson that I saw. You know, good job, good job. Thanks for getting this right. Thanks for participating. Our best moments, people talk about the teacher that changed their life. They didn't talk about the one that told them facts or the, the capital of France. They told the one about the, the teacher who saw something, who saw them and heard them and saw their possibility and delivered that. Um, and so our set, our, our 20th century set of professional tools, a lot of them are obsolete. We do not have to deliver every single detail that we know about English. We have to deliver what they need to know, and it's not the same thing. Um, some of our tools are under underutilized, our, our humanity and our creativity and our passion, and we need some new ones, full stop. It's a new century. We need new tools. Next slide, please. Oh. I don't know why that didn't show up. Anyways, oh, there it is. Too many details, no big picture. They need the picture on the on the cover of the box. It's often referred to, or the metaphor is often a puzzle. So we give them puzzle pieces and no picture. So give them the picture and it's not hard. Okay, next. Grammar focus, and several of the speakers told that. It's so mechanical and so memorized, they can't actually use it. So the studies show grammar focus impedes their ability to speak English. They have to generate English on the fly. They don't have the time to process everything grammatically that they learn. Grammar is important for writing, uh, but speaking is important for speaking. And you have to pick, you can't do what you can speak and gain confidence and ability from speaking. But grammar is going to impede that. More than 80% of ESL teachers in North America avoid teaching speaking completely. They don't even address it. Part of it's IPA is too ridiculous. OK, the next one. So they can't, everybody said this. They can't confidently use the English they study. There's no autonomy in academia. So we have to break out of that and everybody said it. We have to get them doing it. How do you get them doing it is the question, not how much information can I give them. We used to have value as quantity of information and we don't have that anymore. We have quality. What's the, what are the pieces that you need to know? Okay, what's the last one? The last slide. I think we're done, actually. Oh, no, wait. Te yeah, facilitated learning. Teachers and students are totally constrained. Teachers are just as constrained as the students, but we get paid. So we get paid whether advanced students are advanced or not. 
we get paid whether kids can read or not. So there's no accountability in traditional education and in facilitated learning. There's total accountability. There's total accountability. They have complete sets of skills, speaking, making pancakes, um, whatever. In, uh, and that's different. So accountability in education is a 21st century thing. Okay, now we're really done. I think now we're done. Yeah. So English is crazy. And the backpackers guides that I talked about, I'm not here to make you buy those. Um, th their PDFs are free and you can get them from um, Yulia. And sure, questions are freaking awesome. <laughs> there should be questions. This is so progressive. There should be questions. But feel free to email them or that's it. We're done. Thank you so much for inviting me. Judy, you know, I mean, even I can't find words, you know, to express the feeling that uh, you are leaving us after your empowering speech because like the whole, whole huge complicated concept is just not what it was, what it used to be any, any longer. Yeah.